name is Danny Forster, and this is Build It Bigger. I design buildings and teach architecture. And right now, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of the most important bridge project in America. The San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, the third busiest bridge on the planet, could be brought down any day by a major earthquake. If there were another earthquake of that same scale, this bridge could collapse. Yes. To prevent this disaster, California is transforming it into one of the most seismically advanced bridges in the world. So this cable actually buries into the bridge itself. That's right. Has that been done before? No. The first bridge ever to hang from a single cable nearly a mile long. This is one of the craziest things I've ever done in my entire life. Equipped with some of the world's largest shock absorbers, able to combat even a magnitude 8 earthquake. Load up, boom up. Load up, boom up. This 15-year-long project, the biggest in California's history, is entering its final phase. My God, this is like a spacecraft floating over your head. Come up, Dad! I'm in San Francisco, a city famous for cable cars, Alcatraz, and the stunningly beautiful Golden Gate Bridge. But this is also a city located directly in between two of the most active fault lines in America. The Hayward Fault lies 13 miles east of the city center. The San Andreas Fault is just five and a half miles to the west. And the area's busiest commuter bridge, the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, runs right between the two. It was in 1989 when Loma Prieta hit San Francisco, a 7.1 magnitude earthquake that devastated the city. It interrupted the World Series, killed 62 people, and rendered the east span of the Bay Bridge, the third busiest bridge in the world, structurally unstable. The quake stretched the bridge apart causing a 50-foot-long, 250-ton section of the upper deck to collapse. Crews repaired the damage and reopened the bridge a month later, but it was left vulnerable to a complete collapse in the next major earthquake. So right now, to protect the city, architects, engineers, and the government are coming together in the single largest public works project in the history of California. They're attempting to build a new Bay Bridge. Costing $7.2 billion, this eight-mile-long bridge, made up of two unique spans, is getting completely overhauled. On the west span, the double suspension bridge was flexible enough to survive the earthquake. All it needed was reinforcement. But on the east span, the original truss bridge was just too rigid for earthquakes and too weakened from the collapse. So it's getting completely replaced. The new span will be one of the most seismically advanced bridges in the world. An unprecedented type of structure, strong enough to withstand a magnitude 8 earthquake. By designing parts of the bridge to stretch and even break. So by design, you know what piece is going to break during an earthquake. Yes. Which is a very different logic than how the old Bay Bridge was built. That's right. We are engineering the seismic performance of the bridge. So while they were trying to make the bridge as robust and as strong as possible, in some ways, you're trying to make your bridge fail in specific places. And engineered specific places, yes. So you're actually controlling the failure. Yes. By channeling failure to specific areas, engineers can protect the key structural parts of the bridge, like the tower. The single tower will be unlike anything ever built divided into four interconnected legs. They're joined by 120 shear link beams, which will move and absorb seismic energy deforming during an earthquake. The beams can then be replaced in just a few days, thereby protecting the tower from serious damage. It's the first time that this technology has ever been used on a bridge. So during an earthquake, when this thing starts to move, all the damaging force of that quake gets directed right here at the shear link beams. That's right. They break, you replace them, the bridge still stands. That's right. And you design them like 
the bumper on your car. You're driving your car, you have a little accident, the fender deforms, but you can still drive your car. So instead of trying to battle the earthquake, you're kind of just rolling with it. That's right. The new road deck is also designed to roll along with an earthquake. It can stretch more than three feet due to special hinge pipe beams embedded inside. These giant shock absorbers make the new span nine times more flexible than the original Bay Bridge. But directing flexibility into these specific areas means the rest of the road deck has to be bound firm, so it won't be stretched apart in an earthquake. Crews working on the new span are joining together 28 individual bridge segments into one solid roadway through a massive job of bolting and welding. This is happening right now on the first four segments of the eastbound lanes, which will carry drivers into Oakland. Okay, so Daniel, we're now standing at the very edge of the segment. Yeah. And while the bridge wants to have a decent amount of movement to cope with the movement of an earthquake, mm -hmm. the deck itself, you want that to be totally rigid. Yeah, it's completely continuous. No gaps, no breaks, no nothing. Exactly. And you have to line up how many bolt holes from the next piece to this piece? Uh, there's about 4,500 bolts. 4,500 bolt holes. Yep, pretty substantial. 4,500 of these holes below me. Correct, they'd have to line up perfectly. And how much wiggle room do you have with the bolts? There's about one millimeter oversized around each hole. Oh, so it's not that big a deal. So of the 4,500 bolts, you have a good millimeter to play with to really just ease the two together. Yeah, exactly. Is this the most complicated bridge in the world? <laughs> I think it is. Coming down. 4,500 bolts make up just one seam. So you have a team right now that's connecting two of the segments? Yeah. In total, the 28 bridge segments will be bound together from the inside with more than 350,000 bolts. Daryl? How's it going? I'm Danny. Daryl. How are you? Good to meet you. Doing good. Daryl, tell me what's going on up here. Well, we've got to bolt it up, connect it together. Trying to line the bolts up first with the pins so the bolts go in easier. So basically smack in a pin, and by doing so, when that pin goes through, it should kind of pull yeah. up the steel yes. and get those holes together? Exactly. Because I think the thing to remember is that that's an old piece, that's a new piece. Both were made in China, shipped over here. It's jet lagged. <laughs> the steel is beat. <laughs> And now you got to get the steel two different pieces within one millimeter of each other. Yeah. Let's smack in a pin. Lead the way. Let me grab this half pin right here. In order to align the bolt holes, crews start by pounding pins into the stiffening ribs that line the top of the segment, temporarily holding the pieces together. That should line us up. That was very loud, Daryl. Yes. Well, I guess uh, I guess you should have had earplugs on. I'm, I'm used to it, so. Uh, and by used to it, you mean hearing impaired. Yes, yes. Okay, so now the pin is in. They want six in each side. Right, right there? Yeah, the other one there. This is going to be a complicated swing. Daryl, this is not, like, there's not exactly free range of motion here. Yeah, you're limited. Go hit it easy first. Get your motion first, and then you can get more force on it. Come right up under this little space. Right there. there you go. And you don't want to choke up on the beater too much because if you choke up on it too much and you do happen to miss, this is going to hit your hand. So you need to make sure you keep your hand back away from the head of that bolt. Hit it lightly first. Next to the head of the so hand. My hand's up here and I miss. Go. I'm just going to break my finger. Yes, right you're going to break all them fingers. If not, partially take some of them off. You keep your hand away from the beater. All right, choking down on the beater. That's it. Nice little soft hit. And then... That's okay. A couple of scratches won't hurt it. It's a big bridge. I mean, this thing's designed to take space for God's sake. Yeah. There you go. Just have to keep your eye on the pin. Yeah. Like that. See? Very good. It's not bad, is it? You're hired. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> I got all good of job. them. Good job. I got all of them. All right, so now the pin is in place, which means the alignment is good between one plate and the next plate. Ready for bolts. The team's using one-inch diameter high-strength bolts for the connection. Well, that's one. A major improvement on the original Bay Bridge. I mean, they didn't have bolts in there, did they? No, it was rivets. Rivets? Yes. Which is essentially like a pin going through. Yes. New world. New world, right? Yes. On the old Bay Bridge, they used hot steel rivets. Once cooled, they expand to hold the steel plates together. 
but their smooth surface allows for a small amount of wiggle room between the segments. The new bay bridge is designed to move only in specific places. So these threaded bolts lock the segments together and won't slip at all during an earthquake. <laughs> you just bounce that nut off somebody's head down there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Crews have just one week to install all 4,500 bolts. Locking the two road segments together on the inside, allowing welders to finish the job on the outside. How's she look? Good. Fantastic. And there you have it. 36 bolts on one piece of this bridge. But keep in mind, there are 4,500 bolts wrapping around this entire segment. And there are 28 segments on the entire job, which means by the time you drive your car over the New Bay Bridge, Daryl will have done a lot of bolting. Yes, a lot of bolts. Up next, surviving the worst earthquakes ever encountered. Hi, you float. Take some of the heaviest lifts ever attempted. You don't often see five lanes of traffic floating over your head. The San Francisco Bay Area is located on top of some of the most seismically active geology in America. Now, statistically speaking, there's an over 60% chance that a massive earthquake will hit this town in the next 20 years. So when designing a bridge to span the bay, when it comes down to earthquakes, it's not so much if, but when. It's been 20 years since the last major earthquake hit the Bay Area. And the next one could be more than 40 times stronger. So California is racing to make sure the Bay Bridge is ready before something like this happens again. So that image of the top section collapsing under the bottom section stayed with you. Yeah, it, it's, it's burned in everybody's mind. And if you went to our construction offices, in every single office, there's that picture on the front door. And the reason why it's there is to remind us every day that we need to keep going fast to try and get this bridge in service. Because, I mean, there really is an actual non-negotiable deadline. And that, that bridge, if a big quake hits, I mean, it's going to go down. That's right. To fortify this vulnerable bridge, the east span is getting completely replaced with this seismically advanced new span built right next to the old one. It's the world's first ever single tower self-anchored suspension bridge. To really appreciate how a self-anchored suspension bridge works, you gotta understand how a traditional suspension bridge works first. And what better example than the west span of the Bay Bridge? Now you have your vertical towers. You then have your horizontal road deck. And from the towers hang the incredible swooping cables that hold up the road deck, but anchor into massive foundations, both on land and in the middle of the bay. However, on the east side, we don't have the geology to support these loads. So in this bridge, you have your vertical tower. You still have your horizontal road deck. But as the cables come swooping down, instead of anchoring into the earth, they anchor into the road deck itself. Hence the term, a self-anchored suspension bridge. So now when the cable is anchored into the road deck, mm -hmm. and that same cable comes up, goes into the tower, comes down, makes a U-turn, goes up and down again. That's one single cable. It is one single cable. And it doesn't tie into the anchorage, doesn't go into the earth. It actually ties into the road deck, that's right. It anchors on the east ends on either side, and it loops around here. And so as the cable comes down and around the bridge, almost like a, like a belt around my waist, uh -huh. it's both holding up the road deck, but also pushing it together, making it tighter and stronger. That's right. Has that, has that been done before? No. To build this final piece of the new east span, crews are lifting the road deck in 28 massive segments, 14 for the eastbound lanes and 14 for the westbound. The first four pieces of the eastbound side are already up and being bolted together. Right now, they're about to make the very first lift on the westbound side. A steel segment weighing more than a submarine that will hang 150 feet above the water. Before the bridge segment can get picked up and put into place, they have to ready the crane. And to do that, they're attaching a 200 metric ton frame to the front of that, the left coast lifter. It's one of the biggest and strongest cranes in the country. But even this football field-sized lifter can't do the job alone. 
because each segment is a different size and weight, and as a result, each lift has a different center of gravity. So to solve this problem, a customized lifting frame was built to attach to the crane that can easily adjust to accommodate the different segments. So this big yellow steel apparatus that I'm walking on right now is the lifting frame, and it's this thing that connects to the bridge segment and picks it up and puts it in place. But the goal now is to attach this whole lifting frame to the left coast lifter. To do that, we're gonna use these four massive shackles behind me and connect them to these four pad eyes in the four corners of the lifting frame. Okay, there we go. Each shackle weighs as much as a Volkswagen Beetle. You're gonna kill my shackle. Oh. All right, Ryan, coming down. They're so heavy, the team uses a separate crane to lift them over to the pad eyes. Move up, hold your load. Okay, it's coming in. All right, up and over. Look at that thing. It almost looks like a joke shackle, like a paper mache shackle so big. Like you went to a store and there was like a shackle holiday and they made this. All right, boom down, hold your load. Oh, there it is, the pin. Give me a push. Uh, nice. Get that, come along, hooked up. The crew then uses a hand-operated winch called a come-along to pull the shackle towards the paddock. So, as I advance the come-along, the shackle is getting closer. All right. Hard to work, right? Killing me here. You okay, Carlos? I'm good, keep going. You're not tired, right? No, no, I'm, I'm tired of looking at you. <laughs> we get you a 24-hour membership. Yeah, we're gonna inconvenience you, buddy. <laughs> Get ugly with it, Danny. Get ugly with it. Give me a push. To get the pin back through, the nearly one-ton shackle needs to line up within an eighth of an inch of the pad eye. How are we doing? We're getting close. You're almost there. Looking good. Right there. It's right there. Right there. Right there. You got it? Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Look at that. Fourth shackle. Nothing being screwed on which means this lifting frame, all 200 plus tons of it, is ready to go for the 1,000 metric ton lift. With the frame securely attached, the left coast lifter can now raise it 100 feet, clearing the way for a barge to float the bridge segment in beneath it. Piece is coming there right, is right there. right there. There's the piece. Man, that is large. Wow. This segment will carry five lanes of traffic and weighs as much as a fully loaded 747. Crews have to lift it 15 stories above the water. What's so amazing about the way you're building this is that although we're talking about a 10, 15 year construction window, the Bay Bridge is gonna grow today. The morning commuters to San Francisco and Oakland are gonna see that bridge extend for the first time on the west side. That's the first, today's the first time they'll get to see that. Do you ever see that? People are driving, they're like, oh my God. I think they do that every day. We're probably a distraction to the morning commute, but right. you know, we're the kind of distraction the people of San Francisco want because they want this bridge. It's first 80 feet will be up there by lunchtime today. The team has to move quickly to finish the lift. Going up? Because the segment needs to be at full height during high tide. The crane relies on that extra three feet of water to get the piece into place. Are they rigging? They're getting ready to. Which means this lift has got to be done before the tide goes back down in just four hours. All right, so the left coast lifter is now connected at six points to the bridge segment on which I'm standing. Five separate lanes of traffic. We're gonna pick the piece up put it in the air, push it into position, and land it right up there. Coming up, Dan. You guys get out of there. So essentially, now that the six pieces are connected, you're going to talk to the crane operator right. and begin the lift. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good sight. It's uh, 1,200 tons dangling in the air. Hopefully, the wind will calm down. And everything will be good. And all before lunch. Right. got to get off. got to get off. Coming up. You guys can't be up here. All right, Ed's happy with the position. We're gonna get off this thing because in about two so guys over about there. two minutes time, this piece of highway is going up. All going northwest, Ed. Thanks, Mike. Okay, we're ready to come up. Okay, Ryan, let's boom up. All right, you you're part way up, Dan. All right, you're floating. All stop. 
Ten four. What was your ultimate weight there? All thirty. Copy that. All right, so levels look good. Yes. We'll go back to the load up, boom up. Load up, boom up. Wow, that's enormous. You don't often see a chunk of a bridge, five lanes of traffic floating over your head. The crane lifts the piece at about five feet per minute. It has it looking pretty good. It takes a half hour to reach the height of the bridge deck, where another crew waits to begin the most dangerous part of the lift. All right, so the piece is now up. It's about 150 feet in the air. I'm going to go hop on a crew boat, go across the bay, up, and land it. Coming up, landing more than two million pounds of steel. Oh, it's coming down. Okay, it's coming down. We gotta get up. Right on top of our heads. And later, I'm standing atop a cable on one of the most beautiful bridges in the world. And I'm gonna do something a little bit ridiculous. Crews are lifting a 1,000 ton road segment. 150 feet to the height of the New Bay Bridge, an earthquake-resistant self-anchored suspension span. Sign off here? Yeah. Look at that. That is what it's about. So from here on in, no more handrails. The team now faces the most difficult part of the lift, safely landing the segment. The massive piece of steel that will hold five lanes of traffic has got to be lowered onto the support structure with a margin of error that's less than a tenth of an inch. Okay, I'm standing on top of the cradle, which is the temporary structure on which that 1,000 metric ton piece of bridge is about to land. And if you look closely, you can see it's coming towards us. So we're at the right height, bringing the piece up over the temporary steel. Oh, he's got hands on it. Look, he's got hands on it. Wow. Look at this. The piece is now floating over my head into position, and the left coast lifter has to push it about another 20 feet, and we're there. Oh my god, this is like, like landing a spacecraft on top of your head. The team lowers the segment onto eight landing pads. If the weight is not evenly distributed on each pad, it could damage the steel segment. So they cover them with a high-strength protective coating they call goosh. And it's just eyeball. You don't have to get it. It gets applied at the very last minute to keep from hardening too soon, meaning the crews actually climb underneath the two million pound segment. So, Bill, let's be very upfront about the situation. There's something over our heads right now. Yeah, that's correct. The goal is to move as quickly as possible so we can get out of the way of the load and drop it down in these eight points. That's absolutely right. Okay, so talk to me about this goosh. Talk to me about this line. This is a two-part epoxy grout, and what we're trying to do is distribute the weight evenly so there's 100% contact between the plate and the bottom of the steel while it's resting on these cradles. So if there's any mistakes in the steel, it'll get taken up by this lovely, smooth, fast-acting goosh. That's correct. So why do you call it goosh? Goosh is just the nickname we gave it because it's the best way to describe the sound the material makes when it gets displaced under the heavy load. We couldn't spell. <laughs> there, there is no, how, do, how does one spell? <laughs> exactly. Because I thought you named it goosh because it's kind of it's kind of gooshy. It is also kind of goosh. It's kind of goosh. kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, look at that face, Bill. You know what's great about you is that uh, you're able to have a sense of humor with that over top of your head. With all eight landing pads safely covered in goosh. Oh, it's coming down. Okay, it's coming down. We gotta get up. The crane lowers the segment the final few inches onto the cradle, completing this lift. The weight of the over 1,000 metric ton segment has been transferred from the crane down to the cradle. The rods are up, the piece has landed, which means they have at long last taken this first westbound road deck and put it into its final location. And in doing that, they've extended this new connection between San Francisco and Oakland by 84 more feet. The incredible new self-anchored suspension bridge will be a dramatic addition to the San Francisco skyline. The look of the bridge takes its cue from its other iconic neighbors. San Francisco is known for its beautiful bridges. In fact, the Golden Gate Bridge is probably the most famous bridge in the world. So when they decided to make a new east span for the Bay Bridge, it wasn't enough to get some steel and span across the bay. They had to develop a signature span that could stand up to competition like that. Yeah, Marwan, as an engineer, you're faced with the challenge of creating a span that goes over water that can survive an earthquake. Mm -hmm. 
But if you're an engineer in the Bay Area, you're also tasked with making a bridge that becomes an icon. That's right. The citizens felt that the uh, Bay Area deserved better and uh, a signature span of similar magnitude to what the Golden Gate offers. It's a daunting challenge. Because people here in the Bay Area take the swoop of those cables very seriously. That's right. And so the idea is as you come out of that tunnel, leaving the West Span, seeing those iconic swooping cables, the second you drive out, you see them again. You see them again, and you see them dying down, and then you've got the Berkeley Hills in front of you, so it just, just tells a beautiful story. This will be the first time that the design of the East Span matches the rest of the bridge. With the new self-anchored suspension span, the look of the cables will continue across the bay to fit seamlessly with the West Span. This double suspension bridge has been a Bay Area icon for almost 75 years, thanks to its four miles of swooping cables. They're dramatically lit every night with more than 1,200 bulbs, known as the String of Pearls. Keeping these signature lights shining bright is one of the most difficult jobs on the entire bridge. Today, I'm gonna do something that I never thought I'd do. I'm gonna get onto the cable of the Bay Bridge, walk up that cable to change a light bulb. All right, ready? Crews have to swap these light bulbs out once every month. Oh my God. All without stopping traffic on the third busiest bridge in the world. Russell, tell me what's gonna happen right now. We're gonna block traffic, we're gonna get off, jump out of the van, and then we're gonna head on up to the cable. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're going to the upper deck. Traffic is not stopped. We're going to get out of this van, jump over the side of the bridge, and yeah. then climb the cable? Yes. You all got to do is follow me. <laughs> it's going to be fun. The light we're changing is located at the top of the first section of the cable. Now, to reach it, we'll be climbing towards San Francisco, nearly 500 feet above the water. All right, so here we are on the bridge right now. We're getting off? This yep, is it? Getting off. All right, here we go. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Go, we gotta go, we gotta move. All right. This is ridiculous. Now, before we uh, before we do this, I just wanna point something out. Because of the obscenity of what we're about to do and the kind of difficulty we'll be to film it, barring having three or four helicopters, we've come up with this. It's not sexy. Uh, it may not be cool, I'm prepared to admit that, but it will give us a view of this thing that I think we could not have gotten otherwise. So, Russell, what do you think? I like it. It's cool, right? Yep. The kids at home are going to love it. You bet they will. You bet they will. There it is. Pardon the fact that I'm going to look a bit like an elephant. <laughs> OK. So uh, you stay with me. You stay with me, too. You're going to follow what I do. Russell, I will follow everything you do. OK. A couple of things to point out as we begin our journey together on the cable walk. Number one, I'm walking on a cable. Not the widest surface in the world. It's a cylinder. That's awkward. Secondly, also important to point out, to my left, that's the water. To my right, that's a Mack truck. Oh, boy. This cable is only 28 inches in diameter. Coming through, Russell, crossing the threshold. Don't hit your head. <laughs> that's about as wide as a stepladder, but not one inch of the surface is flat. I mean, as you put your one foot down, you feel the curvature of the cylinder. I mean, you don't have a single stable surface to put your feet down on. And uh, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it out loud. This is one of the craziest things I've ever done in my entire life. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. It moves a little bit, doesn't it? What? It moves. Yep, it's the traffic. Traffic's really moving the cable. Mm -hmm. Moving the whole bridge. Well, that's a good thing, right? Right. All right, let's keep moving. Come here. Suspension bridges are designed to move in the event of an earthquake. Oh, my God. Russell, that's a shaky moment there, huh? Yep. Man, this bridge moves. The cable we're walking on can sway up to three feet. One foot in front of the other. Just a big old balance beam, right? Yep. Only about 200 more feet. 200 more feet. Dear God. <laughs> You know what's also sort of amazing about this? This incredible journey, this ridiculously hard path in the service of that. This tiny little light bulb, the famous string of pearls that give this bridge its night signature, well, this is what it takes to maintain it, unfortunately. Russell! Oh, it's getting steep now. Oh, yeah. 
when you start feeling it a little bit more in your legs. Just gotta stay focused, it's getting much deeper. This is the steepest section of the entire cable. The incline gets up to 37 degrees as we approach the top of the tower, 475 feet above the water. Whoa, don't look down. I look down, I look down, I look down. What do you think? What do I think? Um, you know what I think? I think this is the most incredible thing I've ever done in my life. It's nice, Amy. Beautiful. I'm looking at San Francisco in a way that I don't think most people ever get a chance to do. Nope, not even on postcards. Unbelievable. All right, let's move on. All right, Russell, we're almost at the top. And here are these poor electricians. My God. Are you kidding?